good evening. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, we are so glad to have you all tonight yes. for such a huge moment. Like, this is literally history that has been made. Yes. You know, you usually say history in the making. Yeah. It's it has, been, has made. been made. I like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's been seven years, right? Seven years in the making of this beautiful temple that we get to celebrate and have a whole experience around for the next three days. Wow. I mean, look. It's, it's, it's going to be amazing. We have some amazing people coming in. We have people sitting in the seats. We got people watching online. Those yes. that you are watching online right now, from wherever you're watching from, all around the world. So for some of y'all, good morning. For some of y'all, good evening. Yes. And for others, good night. All around the world, we're streaming live yes. to New Life. Look, tell us where you're from. Um, drop something in the comments. Put the clapping hands, the praying yeah. hand emojis, but whatever. Come on Make in. Make a joyful Greet noise one another. Or sound to the Lord yes. for what he's done tonight. Absolutely. We're Look. such a global church, and we appreciate you all for joining in with us here. We have a ton of people in the building, but we cannot forget about our online community and our online members. We appreciate you all so much. We love you so much. Look, you still have time to invite people into this experience. So tag your friends, tag your family, share the stream. Make Please sure a lot of people are joining in on this moment momentous event tonight. Wow, you know, I, I, I sometimes I can't even believe that we're here. Yeah. Where were you when you joined New Life? What location were we at? When I joined New Life, we were just coming out of the tab, going over to the UIC okay. form. The form? Yeah, okay. we were just going over to the form. And I'll yeah. never forget it. I, 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 was sitting, I was sitting in on the left-hand side at one of the services, Pastor Hannah was preaching the message series on who wants to be a millionaire. That's a phenomenal right? memory. You remember the, the oh, sermon? I, re I remember because that night oh he God. said, we have millionaires in this church and they're in C form. <laughs> and to God be the glory. Yes. Come <laughs> on now. We, on, we lie. I ain't going to put out my business out there. But look, <laughs> I remember that day. And it wasn't the fact that he was preaching about money. Yeah. He was preaching about everything that it would take to become a millionaire. He was talking about character, integrity. He was yeah. talking about purpose. He was talking about relationship with God. And in that moment, I was so drawn in, I didn't want to leave. And yeah. from that to this day forward, my wife goes to this church, my daughter goes to this church, yeah. and my son, the beat, will go to this church. Whole yes. family, yes. All of Congratulations, by the way. So how many years has it been so far? I'm 30. That was about 19. How yeah. many years is that? That's about 11. You ain't going to have me. Look, Can I do math, y'all? Don't embarrass me years? on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> a long Correct time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm okay. pretty sure it's 11. A long time, yeah. but it's been a pleasure. What about you? How long have you been in New Life? Yeah, uh, I joined in 2013. But see, I attended New Life for a year before I actually joined. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had this conversation earlier. Y'all, Solo is low-key a minister, okay? Cut it but, out. Uh, we had this conversation <laughs> earlier. I, hadn't, I didn't grow up in church, so New Life Life was like my first um, experience actually joining a church, wow. um, which was phenomenal. I actually heard Pastor Hannah. So I visited some churches um, growing up and as a teen, and I heard him preach when I was 18 years old. And it was actually the first time I had laughed in church. Yeah. Okay. And I thought I did something wrong. I didn't know that never happened to me before. And then <laughs> fast forward to me graduating from college, um, a friend invited me to church. It was a 730 service too. I don't know where I got that energy from in my yeah. early 20s. But I wasn't I getting came, up at 730. I was at the 130 service. <laughs> And it was um, the it was at the tab, and it was so crowded that I couldn't even see, but I heard his voice, and I was like, and I immediately knew that that was the man that I heard preach when I was 18. Mm. So uh, at this point, long story short, what are we in 2021? 20, so I yeah. guess it's been like almost 10 years. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, yeah, one thing old. I one thing I love about the church. When you join the church, you're not just joining the building. You're joining the mission. Yeah. You're joining the purpose. You're joining the passion of God, something that he wants to do on the earth. And he chose you to be a part of it. You didn't just end up at New Life. You were called to New Life. Come on. And I'm so grateful that we all about? have this moment to share the night. <laughs> so, look, I want, you all, I want you all to just drop some emojis in yes. the comments. I mean, even write your, write your messages. Tell us, how you did you join New Life? You Where know, you from? how long Where you been you here? At? Where you from? What part of the city? Yes. What state? What country? Yes. Look, you know, a ton of from? people are flooding this lobby, okay? A ton of people are coming through these doors. They're coming in in a speedy and mighty way, okay? They ready to <laughs> receive the word and have a good celebration tonight. Uh -huh. So we don't want we want to make sure you all are the same. We acknowledge you. We appreciate our online community. Uh, we see some Florida folks, okay? We appreciate having everybody from the East Coast because it's wow. a little later there. You see Detroit uh, in the house? Okay, What's going on D-Town? Yeah. yeah. We got some LA Memphis in the folks. building. Yep, LA. Wow. West Coast people. All around the world.
girl. Of course, Chicago. Yeah, get in this building. If you're yeah. in Chicago, get in this building. You still got time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Indiana, a lot of Midwest people. So that's great. Keep putting your city and your states in. We want to see you. We want to shout you out. If you see somebody that's in another city as you, make sure you shout them out as well. Let's have some fellowship in the comments. Yeah, let's have some fellowship. Hey, I want y'all to drop in the comments a question I'm about to ask her. I want y'all to answer it. Look, what do you enjoy the most about Pastor Hannah? I'm talking, I'm not just talking about his preaching. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about his humor. That man Absolutely. is funny. You already know. Yes. I I am a weeping worshiper, okay? But I can be crying and then instantly laugh. Uh -huh. And I love that about him. It's just so much. He has an energy, too. Oh like, that's it. Just, he's just a ball of energy, and yeah. he's hilarious, yeah, hilarious. Um, and very truthful. Mm -hmm. He's very truthful. I love it. One thing I love about Pastor Hannah, especially as a young man, is, is really just being confident in yourself. Pastor Hannah said one thing one time, and he said he had to find his vein. Basically, he couldn't be anybody else. Yeah. And he had to truly just be himself. Yeah. And that's, that's where his place of power was. That's his humor, why we his love laughter, him. his, his that spirit. That yeah. Man be, that man would be speaking in tongues and come out and start laughing yeah. and go right back to it. <laughs> but it's amazing because it's so authentic. And that's the only way you can reach hearts and minds is through authenticity. And that's one thing I love about Pastor. Yeah. Is his you can just, he has such a light about him too. Like all mm -hmm. the humor and stuff, that's great. But like he just, I don't know, he just feel like, comfortable you know yeah. what i mean like you around him you feel that energy from him you yeah. feel that love from him all the time uh, all the time it's yeah. not just in the building and you don't right and this is the thing too you don't even have to have a personal relationship with him to, just to feel that you, right just in the space he just exudes yeah. all of that oh. positivity now so now we now we can talk all day about pastor hannah yeah but we can't talk we can't spend the night talking about pastor hannah and without talking about that dr glenn the edge snatcher oh, is what i like to call my him God. <laughs> the man he's such a he's such a creative genius i'm yes. talking about the depth of thought and creativity the man it's like god took him 30 years from now and placed him in today and charged him with taking us there with him yeah because for sure the, the concept the ideas that he come up with is just amazing i'm mind boggled look and, um that's why I, I love the visionary, the creativity that's in him. He's so disruptive. His mind is just phenomenal to me. The Make way that think. he thinks, the mm -hmm. way that he articulates a message and just like really like it checks me. I leave after hearing him or even reading one of his books like, okay, what I'm about to do right now. Like I, I feel charged. Mind boggled. Yeah. She was like, this just mind boggled. I'm talking about the way, the way he, not just a message, but just a thought. He can yeah. say literally three words, a sentence that had you stuck for the whole day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're talking about, let's talk about manhood, right? I'm a, I'm a young man. I have a family. I have a wife. He said a man is one who can create and sustain an idea. Mm -hmm. That right there just stuck with me. I had to yeah. have nothing else for the whole <laughs> that night. That was it for you, huh? That right there defined it, did it all it. to me. Basically, a man doesn't quit. A yeah. man doesn't give up. A man goes through the daunting task of creation. I mean, keep coming back, figuring out what else am I missing? What am I doing? All of these yeah. different things came out of that one thought. Man, that guy, he's he on another level. Can we talk <laughs> about Pastor Glenn, though, and not mention the gospel musical artist that he is? Oh, man. Because <laughs> I love the songs hip, that come out of him, too. Hip-hop gospel. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look, we're still waiting for that EP, <laughs> Pastor Glenn. We're gospel. still waiting. I'm reclaiming my time. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Also with our pastors, what I love about them too, they're so multifaceted, right? Yeah. They all, they both have books. Yeah. They're uh, businessmen. Business. They look, they, just all something. of the things. God is about business. <laughs> our God <laughs> is about, about business, yeah. okay? Speaking of God business. God is in the business of business. I have a question business. for you. So Pastor Hannah mentioned um, or talked about yeah. uh, building this temple and how it took seven years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a whole birthing process that it took for a, it being seed, seed time and harvest. We just mentioned this before we went live. Um, you're a businessman. So explain to the birthing process of having the vision, planting the seed, waiting that time, mm -hmm. and then experiencing the harvest. Well, well, one thing I learned about business and time and waiting is time is not set into place to establish the promise. It's to establish the parishioner. It's to establish me. Y'all, look, y'all hit us. God, yep. God, God did not put time into place to establish what he had already declared what happened over my life. Yeah. He just had to prepare me for it. Yeah. And if I'm hard hit, it'll take a little time. Yeah. So I'm grateful for the time that I had to go through because I learned so much. I became a man who could run the business. See, God had recreated the business, but he had to now allow the business and the process to create the man. Yeah. And so 
I love time. It's a so, whole birthing process. You know, the funny thing about seven years, you know, we all know seven is the divine completion. number of completion. Yes. That God allowed it to take seven years. Faster. Come all on. right, we come was on, just come on, come talking on, come about on, you. Come on, come on. Come on. You come through PG. here. Come on. <laughs> we got some video bombers. Come on. We can't there. say photo bombers. They come video bombers. Ooh. Look, look at the suit. You see this Ooh, energy we were suit. talking about? Do y'all see the suit? Stop it. You clean. They stay clean. Yeah. We were talking about all your energy, I, cause I, cause all I know you your humor, leave. how much we love you. I know you're finna leave, but seven years, we are now here today. This all the stuff that you yeah. went through, what are you thinking right now? God is amazing. Like, he has literally exceeded my expectation. Mm -hmm. This is for real in Ephesians 3.20. Yeah. Yes. We've been quoting it for years, but this is really it. We're literally living in it. So, all right, listen. Share it. Make sure everybody's watching. Um, the right Reverend Mike Todd is here. We're about to cut some ribbons. Burr, burr, it's about burr, burr. to be amazing. All right? We got, we got Michael excited. Todd in the building. Hey, if you're from TC Nation, drop it down in the comments. Let, let your pastor know that you are in the building. All right, we're going to shoot it over to the ribbon cutting. We're going to get started. Yeah. Again, make sure you share this stream. You still have time. Um, if you're in Chicago, get in this building. Get in this building. See this, this faith. Um, move of God in this place. Okay, meet us here, share the stream, um, and we're going to kick it over so we can mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, start the celebration. And believe that anything is possible through Christ. Check, check. So, can they hear me? Are you all in the building? Can you make some noise? Listen, we're excited about being here. This is our first night of our ribbon cutting, and we're excited about the apostle, the bishop, the prophet, the thug, Mike Todd, being with us, Pastor Mike Todd. And we're excited about you being here. So tonight, what you're going to do, Pastor Mike Todd, is that we want you to pray over the ribbon, and then we're going to cut it. But all of this ribbon will be cut up into small pieces, and everyone that is inside the auditorium will walk out with a piece of this ribbon. We believe that the oil of God is on your life. We believe that the hand of God is on your life. And we believe that you're going to pray for the spirit of creativity. And so everyone that is in this building, we're going to pray that a, a will open up inside of you of creativity. And that the same God that has done it for Pastor Mike Todd is able to do it for you. So we're going to ask him to pray right now, and then we'll cut the ribbon. Come on, hands lifted everywhere right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, the God of creativity the one who put the stars in place, the one that told the ocean how far it could go, the one who created every living thing, Father, and things that we don't even understand to this day, the God of the universe, the cosmos, the God, Father God, that knows the hairs that are on our head. Today, God, we're asking you in this moment of dedication to allow there to be a well of creativity that would flow from this place unto the entire world. God, we are asking that the anointing that goes back generations for people to be able to make something out of nothing would well up in this place. And Father God, there would be a creative anointing that would come for, for theatrics, that would come for television, that would come for business ideas, that would come for real estate, that would come 
Father, for fashion that would come for music, that would come, Father God, from every mountain that is in the earth today, that creativity would rise from this place. God, we declare and we decree everything that would block the ideas of heaven from opening in this place. You are now evicted and eradicated. We declare and we believe there will be divine collaborations. There will be divine ideas. And Father God, there will be divine wealth that flows out of this place. We thank you not for a one generational anointing. We thank you that this will go down from generation to generation, that this will be a multi-generational gathering place. It will be a temple that will be able to house all of the arts. And today we declare and we decree when accolades come, when awards come, when grants come, Father, we will step back and we will give you all the glory. Let this be a place of new life. Thank you, Father God, that every creative that have had an area in their life that has been dead, it comes to life now. We declare, we believe, and we dedicate this moment, this building, and more than anything, our lives back to you. Have your way and allow the same anointing, Father God, that is on this leader and on my life to flow to every person. In Jesus' name, we agree. Somebody shout, amen. 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 We want to present you with your own scissors to remind you of today, to know that you were part of our history here at New Life. God bless you. Thank you so much. This is phenomenal. All right. And the second one we want to give it to is Pastor Hill. Pastor Hill, you are the co-founder of this church. You've been with me every step of the way. And I want to salute you tonight and let you know that I could not ever made it this far without you. So I salute you, man. We We are for life. We're going to die together. <laughs> All right, everyone turn and pay attention to the screen. Let's go.
Hello, my name is Anna Marie Hanna, and I am the wife of Pastor John Fitzgerald Hanna. What was it like watching my husband build something so meaningful to him? I would reckon it to um, a new parent waiting for the birth of their first child. Um, like you're excited, but then like towards the end, you're like, okay, hurry up already. I would reckon it to that of anticipation. And I think at the beginning, it's almost like he, I think he probably may have felt that it was gonna be a lot easier than it was. And it's like a parent, wait, like I said, a parent waiting for their child to be born. The closer you get to the delivery date, you know, you, you start having these little hiccups happen. So I would reckon it to that. I had a lot of prayers for the temple, but one of the prayers was that God would hurry up and let it be built because I saw the anguish that it was causing my husband. And I know that no spouse ever wants to watch their spouse go through these, you know, peaks and these valleys. And for me, it was, I went through different phases where I was like, okay, God, provide the money, the finances for the temple to God, please don't let it be so hard for him while the temple is being built. And lastly, I prayed that God would really bless the temple. How does it feel now to be in the temple? It's kind of like seeing something come to pass, but you've gone through so much labor with it that you feel like you can just sit back and just kind of breathe and catch your breath. So that's what it feels like being in the temple right now and praying that what you know is going to happen, happens that the glory of God would just another level will come forth in this ministry. Um, it's really not the temple, but it's in the ministry of new life. It's not the building. The soul and the purpose of new life to me has always been birthing new souls, to disciple souls, and to allow the men and women and the children that come through new life to be everything that God has called them to be. Anybody ready to give God the glory in the room? Hallelujah. Yes. We are so glad that we serve the King of Kings and we declare that he's in the room. You're invited to join in and worship with us. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Come on, somebody clap. You do impossible things. In you, the bound become free. So we give you glory. Yeah, come on, we give you glory. We give you glory. Yes, Lord. Nothing can stand against you. Worship and honor our due. So we give you glory. Come on, we give you glory. We give you glory. And we make this declaration say, Celebrate for the kings in the room. Lift your voice for the kings in the room. Walls come down when the kings in the room. Sing glory, glory. Celebrate, celebrate for the kings in the room. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice for hey. the kings in the room. Come on, walls come down. Walls come down when the kings in the room. Sing.
glory and honor are due. We worship you. Yes, we worship you. Our hands are lifted to you. Our hands are lifted to you. Glory and honor.
It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Come on, let's say, come on, tap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, every heart. Would you lift that up? Say, I am. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Come on, praise the Lord. 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 We lift you up. We praise you, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why I live. Praise the Lord. Just to give you glory. Praise the Lord.
and open your mouths. Come on, there's a sound that has to be in the building. And it doesn't have to just come from the stage. It needs to come from the house. Everybody, don't you allow a mask to stop you from opening your mouth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Can you lower the music? I need to hear the sound in the house. Everybody open your mouths. Come on, there's a sound that has to go with the house of God. It is the sound of victory. Come on, there's a sound. Come on, there it is. Come on, there it is. There it is. You've been kept in the land of the living because you hold the sound. I need you to represent your house and release a sound. Glory. So, I'll talk later. We just wanted to come up and just welcome you all. And I want to say to everyone that is here, you're literally standing on a promise. And for everyone that's waiting on God to do it for you, I need you to stump your feet and say the same God that did this is going to do it for me. Watch it. Watch it. I need you, if you were doubting, you need to start stumping your feet and say the same God. Yes, sir. I need you to know for those of you all that are leaping, you're leaping on the word of God because when we laid the foundation, we put put prayer requests and scriptures in the foundation of the building. Yes, sir. So every time you leap, Make the word come forth. Go ahead and take a leap of faith and say the same God, same God. The hey, same Caitlin, the same God. Pastor Hezekiah, the same God. He's coming to your house. He's dealing with your chicken and stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't no. stop. No. Release. Come on, man of God. Release the word of the Lord over the people. Be not weary in well doing. Yeah. For in due season, you shall. You gonna reap if you faint not. Let this be an encouragement to your faith. Now unto him that is. I don't want to shout. Now. They had that shout already. Could everybody just please do a leap of faith and say the same God. The same God. They had that shout already. Let's let our wives greet them, and we're going to get off the stage. Come on, Erica, please say something, please. Say Say something, say something. 
We're not going to hold it because we want to release Ja'Kalen. But you know what I heard? My turn. My turn. I need you to look at somebody and say, it's my turn. It's my turn now. I've turned for everyone else. Now God's about to give me a turn. I need some of y'all to know that he brought you to this building to fill you back up with crazy faith. Crazy faith. And I got the crazy faith man in the building today that if you don't grab this thing today, you have lost your mind. God say, I'm surrounding you with such great clouds of witnesses so that you can know that the same God. Same God. Bro, let's go. Can we please get off the stage? Bro. What up? They, they got like a 60 second shout in. It's just 60. It's just 60. It's just 60. You better hurry up. You only got 30 seconds left. You got 30 seconds. I'm not doing it. You got 20 seconds. Hurry up. Praise him, Marlon. Get it out, get it out. Everybody release a clap and a raise right there for the same God. Same God. Can you say hello to, can you I just say hi? I know we saw you on video, can you say it? Take your mask off, She'll bring us back. over 30 years ago. He came into that dark place where I was, where depression had overshadowed me. But the one consistent thing in my life, other than my husband, love him dearly, but it's been God. And if it's okay with you, come on. Because I have to get permission first over to speak over the house. Go ahead. And today, God gave me to speak these words over this house. Come on. Because for 18 years almost, God has been consistent in saving someone every service, every Sunday. So I just pray that God's consistency will continue over this house. Not only in salvation, but when people come in, that he will 
be consistent in restoration, that he will be consistent in transforming minds that need to be regulated, that he would heal the sick and the lame, and that there would be miracle signs and wonders in this house. Come on! That God would just pour his spirit, that people would be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Come on! And have the evidence in speaking in tongues. I pray that God would bring back relationships that were torn, that he would bring back families that have been separated. I just pray that God would just continue to bless you and to keep you. And I pray most of all, uh, that God will continue to do the work that he's called this ministry to do. And I pray that God would just continue to encourage your heart yeah. to pour his love and to pour his revelation into you yeah. and to keep you and your relationship together. Yeah. That nothing would come between you two. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, wow. Everyone lift your hands and worship God for 10 seconds, wow. won't you? You can't be under this roof and the oil not get on you. Just for 10 seconds. He's consistent. He's consistent. He's consistent. With your hands lifted, you should tell God, do it again. Do it again. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I want you to release a praise like your blessing just showed up again come on again before the year runs out he gonna do it for you again come on you got one more quarter left in the year and he still has time to do it but I need you to be consistent with your praise. Praise God like he always does it for you. Come on, five more seconds, five. Four. Three. Two. One. On your way to your seat, just let somebody say, he's gonna do it again because he's consistent. Pay attention to the screen. Hello everyone, I'm Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and it's my pleasure to extend greetings and congratulations to Pastor John Hanna and the entire New Life Covenant Southeast family for the grand opening of the new temple located in Greater Grand Crossing neighborhood. A lot of hard work, dedication, and sacrifice went into making this beautiful, state-of-the-art facility, which will also serve as a performance art center, making it an important community extension that not only brings spiritual guidance, but much-needed resources, economic investment, and community leadership. New Life Covenant's commitment to community partnership will play a major role in helping this neighborhood reach new heights of success and togetherness as well as assist in re redirecting the futures of its residents, especially those that are young, in a positive way. These shared goals and principles are also important to me personally and have the potential to build stronger connections between our communities. I commend Pastor Hannah and the whole New Life family for going out of their way to generate positive change within the neighborhoods they serve. 
This milestone occasion is truly a cause for celebration, so I hope you all continue to enjoy tonight's service. And on behalf of the City of Chicago, congratulations once again on your new beautiful building. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to do something quickly because I'm determined that we get um, our guests up as soon as possible. We thank God that Jacqueline Carr is in the building. And we thank God that Pastor Mike Todd is in the building. And I'm determined to get them up because I don't want it to say, man, they had long church and then they put us up late. I've been in that seat and I hate that seat. Putting the speak up at 10 o'clock is of the devil. Listen, <laughs> that is when Satan has entered the church. Um, I want everyone to give a seat tonight. And if everyone can sell a seat of $27, 27, how do you give? You can text and give those online you can give if you're on our app you can give if you're on our YouTube page you can give but everyone you can give if you say well I brought it I didn't I brought a check or I have cash you can still give you're gonna pass it but you're gonna turn these lights up you don't raise an offering in darkness people gotta watch the seed that is if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. Um, if you go in the lobby, you'll see a fountain. One of the fountains, it has um, over 2,500 names of individuals that sold $1,000 or more before we started construction. On the other side, you'll see a blank fountain, and those are those that are gonna sow now. One of the things, and I want some of y'all to hear me, that you're literally standing on a promise. Do you not know that all the land that we own, we paid cash for? We bought over 44 parcels of land, pieces of land, and paid cash. The only time that we had to go to a lending was to get this building built. Other than that, the church around the corner, it was paid cash for. The office paid cash for. What am I trying to say to you? There's a cash anointing in this house. Um, the earth is the Lord's and some of you all you need to see it in order for you to believe it we are not a suburban ministry we are in the heart of the hood and I remember when I went to the city of Chicago they told me what you want to do you'll never be able to do in this city because there's not enough land to hold you and I told the city I know that I'm called to the city so you just push God into a corner and he's about to prove himself to be God when we started buying the land, I was coming to 4 a.m. prayer, and the Lord said to me, he said this to me, the earth will yield what belongs to you. From that point, we started buying every vacant house, every vacant lot, to the point that people started knocking on the church door saying, do you want to buy my house? Nothing will be able to stop the promise of God from being fulfilled in your life. You have to hear me. Some of you are a $27 seed, you sow it. If you don't have the 27, you get the best seeds you can in your hand. But if you believe that he is able, you sow into it by faith. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Get your seed in your hand. If you're going to text and give, you text the words NLCSE to 77977. Again, if you're going to text and give, you text the words NLCSE to 77977. Come on, get your seat in your hand. If you have your seat in your hand, can you lift it up to the Lord? Come on, if you have an iPhone, lift it all the way up. If you have an Android, please lower your hand. <laughs> Don't you raise that Android up that high. Please. Some of y'all got that big flat screen TV in your hand. Listen. Lift your seat up to the Lord. We say this every Sunday, and we've been declaring this for years. Open your say, I'm a tithe and a giver, and I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you living it? For the rest of my life. 
That is our declaration. If you have a, an envelope and you want to, if you could pass it to your right, watch it till it get to the end until the ushers pick it up. Don't trust nobody else with your seed. Amen. Even Jesus had Judas and he was a thief. Can you do me a favor while we're doing that? All the pastors that are here, can you do me a favor? Can you all stand wherever you are? All the pastors that are here. All pastors that are here. Come on, come on. Come on here. Dr. Brazier is here. Bishop Hezekiah Walker is here. Come on, my new life pastors are here. Cedric is here. Come on here. Pastors from all over here. Pastor Lot, all of you all that are here. Can you all do me a favor? Can you just celebrate pastors right now? Such a great responsibility. We celebrate you and we thank God that he sent you here. And I want to encourage every pastor, walk through this building. It is a walk of faith and know that God's going to do amazing things for you. All right? All right, come on, where we at? What's next? Is it? Is it? All right, we did it. It is 757. And we are about to bring up this little powerhouse. She is amazing. And I am excited about her being here. I've been trying to get her to come to New Life for years. Come on out. Come on out. I've been trying to get you to come for years. I've been talking to your daddy for a long time. Look at a mighty woman of God. And we celebrate you being with us on tonight at the ribbon cutting. And we just want you to know that we pray for you. We cover you. And we pray that God continue to do amazing things in you. You're still young. And there's so much more that he want to do for you. Amen. So we thank God. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate Jaquela Carr. She ministers at this time. Somebody clap your hands and give Jesus a praise up in here. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Open up your mouth and give them glory. Give them glory. Give them glory. Give them glory. Give them. I'm just trying to make sure I'm in the right place. Open up your mouth and give God glory. I just want you to do a roll check. I want you to look down your roll and say, roll. Come on, tell them with some power. Say, roll. It don't nobody else get it. This roll gon' get it. Now, I need you to open your mouth and give God praise for your roll tonight. Come on. Y'all ain't loud enough. Come on, open your mouth and give them praise for your roll. I give God glory to be able to stand with you as you're resting upon your feet. Can you help me give God praise for this powerful, anointed, God-chosen man of God, Pastor John Hannah? Come on, we can do better than that. His beautiful and lovely wife, Lady Anna. Help me give God praise for her. Lift your hands all over the room. There's this new song that God has given me and the name of it is My Portion. And listen, I don't know what you've been waiting on, but I stopped by to tell somebody up in here tonight that God showed up to give you what has been due to you. Many of you, you've been doing some things for a good minute now. And I came to tell somebody that time is now. I said the time is now. Can you air hop by three people and say now, now, now. I don't know what you've been waiting on, but you about to get your portion, baby. And you ain't leaving nothing behind. You getting all of it. If you're ready to get all of it, you want to open up your mouth and shout. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. Want to release this to the atmosphere that in this season, you shall get your portion. It's not your pause, sickness, 
It is not your portion Poverty It is not your part If you're ready to get your promise Clap your hands right there, right there You never knew You'd be broken You never knew You cried the tears that you cried You never knew You'd lose the things she loves But I heard his voice say I have got you, I have got you That's your portion Good health That's your portion The abundance season. Do I have any winners in the building? Mike Todd, I love you so much. Somebody say, I will win. Let's lift it up, y'all. Here we go. The enemy came up against your heart. And the enemy came up against your children. The enemy came up against your name. Oh, Lord, yeah. the enemy came up against your character. But I want you to know, you will win, win, you will win, oh, the enemy came up against your health. Come, hey, the enemy came up against your finances. Your vision, oh Lord, the enemy came up against your business.
your hands all over the room. I declare tonight that what you're going through is not bigger than the God that's working for you. If you don't mind, I need you to air, touch your neighbor's shoulder. And tell him God is doing bigger for you. Why? Because he's bigger. And when you serve a big God, he don't give you little stuff. I said, when you serve a big God, he don't give you little stuff. But everything God does for you is big, 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 big. Somebody shout, you're bigger. Oh, release that again. Big, 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 big. I don't what I don't know what he's about to in introduce you into, but I came to tell somebody it ain't small, it ain't little, it's big. You wanna open your mouth and shout big. Sing it with me, bigger than the universe. Bigger than the sun and the stars 
You're bigger than her things Oh my, oh my You can tell me apart You're bigger than the universe I know, I know, I know You're bigger than the sun and the stars oh, You are bigger than everything Everything, Jesus That could tell me your part And we stay together for a Wave your hand and say you're great enough. Everybody say for a no say you're great enough. You're great. You're bigger. Now if you know that you know that you serve a big God, open your mouth and shout glory. You're bigger than the problem side. You're bigger than the disasters I've seen You're bigger, you're so much bigger, Jesus Than what does life may bring Everybody say You're bigger than the universe Yes, you are You're bigger than the sun and the stars You're bigger than a thing Found you to be bigger than a thing That's trying to tear us apart Say for us your voice and say for right now for I you are you are you are one more time say for I know say great and all you're great in all the earth hey, you're bigger Jesus now somebody give your big God a big praise I said, give your fuck God a big praise. I'm about to go. Can you give me F sharp and church it for me real quick, real quick, real quick. Church it, church it, church it. I'm getting ready to go. Again, Pastor Hannah, congratulations. May God continue to accelerate you. Can you just open your mouth and say acceleration? Come on, somebody shout acceleration. And it is so. Now listen, I can't leave here without declaring that if you want it, you can have it. If you need it, you can have it. I need you to air high five, 10 people and say it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's your new life. I know y'all know what to do. Y'all know how to dance. We about to give them glory. Let's go. Wow. If you want, you 
Call 
clap your hands like you used to at a Friday night service. How many of y'all know we used to go to church on Friday night just to call on Jesus? If you believe it's yours, release a praise like you. Don't let somebody sing over you and you miss it. I need you to grab that thing like it's yours. Come on, don't be entertained, be ministered to. Everybody believe that God is too big to let you down. Release a praise like the next one is going to be yours. A big God deserves a big praise. Come on, everyone stand to your feet. Everyone stand. So, I need some of y'all to understand while you're in this building, God's doing something big for you outside this building. You in the belly of a promise. So, oh, the music. I want to present our speaker for tonight. <laughs> um, and I want, I want you young people to listen to me. It is up to you all to cover the voice that speaks to you. It is up to you all to cover your generation that speaks to your generation. They have enough warfare that come from the older generation. But I need you all to be the Jonathan to the David. And I knew that, and I sent him a text and said, can I thank you for being sensitive to the spirit, for hearing God tell you to come to Chicago, to speak in this house, and to speak over our city. For those of you that are at home and those of you that are in the building, this is divine timing. It's the wrong time to, for you to be scrolling on Instagram or Facebook. This is a time for you to pay attention to what the Lord is saying for you in this season of your life. I need you to hear me, and let me show you how divine this is. Please listen to this. Seven years ago, we did a groundbreaking. We did a groundbreaking on land that we didn't even own. We just broke the ground. Look, the city owned the ground. We even invited the mayor to come stand on the ground that he owned. Yes, Touch your neighbor and say, it's some crazy faith in the building tonight. Some of y'all waiting on them to call you and God said, no, I'm waiting on you to move and then they'll call you. Now, I want you to get the divine timing. Everybody say divine timing. So yesterday we were here and we were doing like, we did like five interviews and something came up in our feeds of seven years ago in September of 2014, the exact week. Seven years ago, this exact week, we didn't even realize it. We broke ground on this building Seven years ago, this exact week. And the Lord is inviting you into a celebration to let you know you're going to have one too. And I need you to see how he's loading you daily. He's loading you. He got Ja'Kayla coming in talking about he's big. 
is yours. Now we got this man, Pastor Mike Todd, who's about to stretch your faith. If you don't get everything God has for you, it's your fault. But if you believe that God has something supernatural for you, I'm going to give you an opportunity to worship him by faith. Lift your hands and worship God for 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds. Thank him for the word that's about to come forth. Thank you for how he's about to speak to you. Thank him for how he's about to stretch you. He brought in proof to let you know that he is God. Pay attention to the screen, and immediately after that video, you are going to be in the hands of this amazing giant in the spirit. Everyone, every preacher, every teacher used to celebrate him for who he is, because the same God that does it for him is able to do it for you. The Bible says, I need you just to rejoice with him right now. Pay attention. Pastor Michael is the lead pastor of Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His personal philosophy and driving passion is representing God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. Their mission is to place Christ in the center of culture, to impact their community, city, and world with the gospel presented in a relevant and progressive way. New life, get ready to unlock crazy faith and welcome Pastor Mike Todd. Chicago, can we give God the biggest praise? With no music, just for a second, can we out of our bellies give God the biggest praise that we got? From the back to the front in the balcony, give God a shout of praise. Chicago. This is the second time I've spoken out of my church in two years. I'm not responsible, responsible for what's about to happen. God gave me the message I was supposed to share tonight, last week, to preach to the people who had faith to come into this room tonight. And I don't know what you've been going through and what's been happening, but tonight, Pastor Hannah has already said, you're standing in the belly of a miracle. And anytime God brings you to a place where he's already broken through something, it's to give you the feeling so that you can go back to your home and break through something else. Now there's some fake people on this side and some bougie people on this side, but there's some people in here that need to break through something. It might be in your family. Uh-oh. It might be in your mind, it might be in your finances, but faith is praising God in advance for what he's going to do down the road. So I'm going to give you 15 seconds to tell God with your voice, to tell God with your shout, to tell God with your hands how much you believe. Let's give God a shout of praise. We worship you, God. There's nobody like Jehovah. There's nobody like our God. Yikes. Something's stirring in the building. It doesn't matter how you got here tonight. It was a setup. Some of y'all came to show off your new outfit. It's cute. This was a setup. Some of y'all tried to come and see who was going to be here and, 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 and try to see what was happening. Tonight was a setup for your destiny. And I believe God is about to do something unique in this place. Hands lifted all over this room. Hallelujah. Said you have won the victory. I heard it's somebody's winning season in the room right now. So we say hallelujah. Said you have won it all for me. Just sing that one more time. Let's give them the highest praise. Hands lifted to him. Say hallelujah.
that you have won. The fact that I'm standing here tonight, Father God, we give you all the glory. Somebody lift it up, say hallelujah. My favorite part. Cause death could not say, death could not hold. Something's happening. Everything that's dead is coming alive. You. We don't need praise team. The choir is right here. Seated in majesty. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Said you are. Say. Say hallelujah. God, we honor you. This is not for me. This is a praise unto your God. Sing, sing hallelujah. Father, we honor you in this place. And we say, well, come on, into this broken vessel said you desire in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto you. God, you're welcome here. Somebody put your hand on your heart and say, God, you're welcome here. Yeah, whatever you want to do tonight, God, you're welcome here. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. Father, give me wisdom beyond my years. Give me clarity to be able to share your word. And Lord, I thank you that I stand in authority in this moment. Tag team back again. Holy Spirit, I need you can't do it without you speak to your people it's my prayer you're welcome into this place in Jesus name if you got faith in the building will you give God one more huge shout oh come on oh come on new life oh come on Chicago is that the best praise you I said is that the best praise you got Some of y'all are about to get a breakthrough, too. Breakthrough is in the room. Somebody give God praise. Yikes. High five three people on your way down and say, you're not ready for what's about to happen. <laughs> Come on, give it to three people. You're not ready. For what's about to happen. Ugh. Something supernatural is about to take place tonight. I don't just say stuff like that. You know how people get up and just say random stuff like that? I'm a real one. I only say stuff that I feel God saying. Something supernatural is about to happen tonight. Yep. To God be the glory. This is only my second time in Chicago. And I love it. And um, it's God that I'm here. Um, it was funny how this whole thing happened. Pastor Hannah was on the phone with one of my friends, Pastor Joel Tudman. And while we were on the phone, he FaceTimed him. 
and Joel was sitting there. I don't know if Joel's a drug dealer or something because he had two phones. And I'm, my first meeting with Pastor Hannah is through FaceTime on another phone FaceTiming. And Joel's holding two phones and Pastor Hannah is on his couch somewhere and he said, Pastor Michael, God only told me three people that was supposed to speak at this. And you're the only one I couldn't get in contact with. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit said, Michael, you have a deposit that you have to go give to this church and to Chicago. I, I say that to say, when God tells me to go somewhere, it don't matter what happens to try to make me stay. Tonight, it was destiny that I be here. And to be the first person speaking at this amazing celebration. Today, I want to honor the faith of Pastor John and Anna Hannah. Can we give God praise? Y'all better not sit in them seats and act like they did not pioneer for seven years to get us to this moment. We honor you and we thank God for you. And to the Glens, can we thank God? When my sister yelled earlier, my right toe curled up. Thank you for your faith to all of the pastors and all the friends. Jacqueline and Carl, is that normal? We love you. And thank you for being a sound of two generations in one. She carries in her a 68-year-old, I mean, does hair with grease, like cooked chicken and... And then still can relate to a generation. And I thank God publicly for your ministry and what you do. All right, is anybody ready for the word tonight? All right, y'all sit down. All right, so um, I feel underdressed. Came in the room, everybody in suit and ties. I'm in a wife beater and a jacket. And nobody told me that um, we'd be coming in right to the camera for the ribbon cutting. And so since I'm already out here, I'm gonna do what I would do at home. Is that okay? I'm gonna act like this is Transformation Church. Transformation Nation, I know you in the building. I love you. Whoa. I didn't know Chicago was, okay. I love y'all. Um, I love, I, yeah, I love you too. I didn't understand nothing you said, but I love you. Um, tonight, I feel like I have an assignment from God. The reason I'm moving like this is because I know what the Spirit's about to do. And, and some of you um, came to be entertained. That's not happening tonight. Tonight, I'm coming to deposit. It's already happened in my life, so if you don't catch this, I'm cool. I'm going home to the results of what I'm about to talk to you about. We shouting it's my winning season, but it's been my winning season because I found out there were some things that God has made available for all of us that many of us leave on the table. And so tonight, I'm going to try to practically and very intentionally walk you through um, a revelation that God has given me that could unlock, everybody say unlock, everything that has to do with your purpose and destiny. Um, last Tuesday, um, I wrote and um, released a book called Crazy Faith, this book right here. And if you have not gotten this book, I would encourage you. She got her book right there. I love you. Um, I'm not saying this um, to sell books. I'm saying this because um, I feel real vulnerable right now. Because you know when you do stuff at your house that you okay doing when nobody else is around and you feel cool because you know you and you do you when you around you? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. 
But then when somebody else comes and judges what you do, it feels a little vulnerable. Well, God told me, Michael, I want you to start writing down and sharing the principles that I've given you to walk in faith. And I, got, I said, God, that, some of the stuff I do is a little crazy. Regular black people don't do this type of stuff. Why would you want me to share? He said, because I wrote in my love letter that when the son of man returns, he asked for one thing, will I find faith? Not big churches, not, not, not movies, not music, not out. Will I find, shout it out me, faith. And the sad truth is, God can come into his house and not find the substance. You wear the medallion, no faith. Honk if you love Jesus stickers, no faith. Shout, no faith. And today I want to shoot an adrenaline shot of faith into your spirit. This place that you stand in and sit in today was built by, everybody shout it at me, faith. And my question is, what has built your life? Many of you, it's been logic, fear, anxiety, connections, networking. But that doesn't give God glory. The Bible says the just shall live by. There's a theme here. And today I want to unlock your faith in a brand new way. Some of y'all are looking at me like, who is this boy up on that stage? Never heard of him. My cousins know him, but so what? I see you, Auntie Jean. Let me tell you a little bit of my crazy faith story. Me and my wife, um, Natalie, we pastor a church in Tulsa, Oklahoma um, called Transformation Church. We took over this church, um, we took over this church six years ago almost from a man and a woman who went to North Tulsa at the site of the Greenwood race riots. The race massacre is what it really was. <laughs> and right there on Greenwood and Archer, this man of God who happened to be white God told him, take off your shoes and I want you to dedicate, do something crazy. Take off your shoes and I want you to dedicate your life to reversing the curse that people that look like you brought to this area. And I would be remiss if I don't take this moment. My founding pastor is in the building right now. Bishop Gary McIntosh, would you stand? Y'all wouldn't know Mike Todd if it wasn't for Bishop Gary McIntosh. Can we give God some praise? I love you, sir. This man moved to North Tulsa, brought his whole family to North Tulsa. All his white friends was like, Gary, what? Sheesh. Black people don't say jeesh, but white people do. And dedicated 16 years of his life to building a church named Greenwood Christian Center. I came to that church as a sound man. Shout out to the sound man. Nobody shouts out the sound man until it goes wrong. They're like, fire him, get him out of here. More reverb, more reverb. Started out as the sound man. Just served in that church. February 1st, 2015, after I went from being the youth pastor, the executive pastor, 27 years old, this man lost his mind and handed me the baton and the keys and the checkbook to the church. I said, what, what are we about to do? <laughs> he said, God's hand is on your life. And this may sound crazy to everybody else, but God's going to use you to touch the entire world. I was like, if you say so. <laughs> we take over the church. 
37 days after I become the lead pastor of Transformation Church, I'm in my quiet time praying to God. And I start writing down crazy things on this piece of paper. I brought, I brought it so I could prove it to you. The first thing says Transformation Church this is gonna be Transformation Church. And I spelled transformation wrong. I spelled transformation. <laughs> and I left it on here just like this to encourage somebody that God does, need, does not need a perfect version of you to be able to reach the purpose that he has on your life. He'll do it with the rough edges. I don't know who this is for. He'll do it with your learning disability. He'll do it, yeah. And the first thing it said is the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. I wrote this down with less than 300 people in our church, no money in the bank, people judging every Sunday if they were coming back because there's no way that this young man could lead me and my family. And I wrote this down in the presence of God. March 9th, 2015, 7.29 a.m. in Bella's room. I had the audacity to mark it down. Long story, check. Long story short, five years later, a building that the city built for $54 million, they sold it to us for $10.5 million and we paid it off in cash in six months. I don't even have to have nobody to shout with me. That's crazy. I'm 31 years old going into the side of the city that they said we don't want you here boy and I bought the biggest piece of property in the entire city I'm trying to tell somebody Jacqueline you said bigger right <laughs> somebody needs to know what you've been thinking what you've been dreaming God says bigger So I thought it was it. We shouted, we danced, we gave God glory. And as I was driving up to this building one day, the Holy Spirit told me something, Pastor Hannah, that I came to tell you. Don't take your foot off the gas. Man of God, I'm prophesying to you. This was the thing to bust it open. This wasn't the finish line. This was the thing to let everybody in Chicago know that there is a new sheriff in town and his name is Jesus. And if God be for you, somebody shout at me, who? Say who? Man of God, don't take your foot off the gas. I was going to the place of blessing. And God said, would you believe me to do something bigger than what you thought I just did? I said, God, you know what I'm saying? I'm okay. <laughs> it's good what you did already. That took a lot of faith, Lord. <laughs> but I said, God, there's something in me that thinks you can do more. He said, yeah. This whole development in front of the church I want you to own it now you say Pastor Mike what's the development in front of the church it's a business complex called the post rock um, business complex 35 commercial businesses everything from State Farm to chiropractic office to eyeglass places even the land that Chick-fil-a sits on and you know that's holy ground <laughs> this whole thing was one complex and God said, will you believe me for it? One year after we bought the whole arena, I got the keys to all seven of the buildings and we bought the entire... 12 months later, if God did 12 months later there, Pastor Hannah, get ready for what God's gonna do a year from now. 
you better believe that God can do more in 12 months. Oh my God. I just came to testify today. We bought that for $20.5 million. But he wears Jordans. But I serve God. But he has only six months of Tulsa Community College education. But the Holy Spirit is the one who knows everything. He will tell me what to do, show me where to go, give me the wisdom that I don't have on my own. So in the middle of the pandemic, Pastor Hannah, we bought the whole block, the whole thing. Middle of the pandemic, bought the whole block. Now, this is the point where people start hating. I know I feel your spirit right in this section right here, right here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the moment people start hating because now you're trying to figure out why I deserved it. You're trying to figure out, like, what, who, when. And none of those things were the qualification for the reason why God allowed us to walk in this level of favor. It's one word. I believed. Now, I know, I know, I know. We say we believe. But then when God asks us to do something in faith, we don't move on it. So last week, everybody say last week. Last week. I thought God was done. I mean, this is three years in a row where he, 2019, we buy the whole arena. 2020, we buy the whole block. We were looking for a space to build the entire children's ministry because our children will have state-of-the-art everything even before the, the adults get it because the next generation is already being desensitized every day from iPads and social media and TikTok and we want to throw them a coloring sheet. I'm talking to somebody right now and, and we got to do it for the next generation at a whole nother level. So we started looking to be able to find space. And what they told us, Pastor Hannah, is we didn't have enough space in the current building, 192,000 square feet, to be able to do the children's area that we needed to do as well as office there. So I sent the team out while I was on break this summer to look for offices. And I was resting. I was on sabbatical, we just had a new baby, I was resting. And June 19th, on Juneteenth, Holy Spirit woke me up and said, Michael, I want you to do something specific today. You're about to do a city-wide service, and this is the hundredth year of the race massacre that happened in Tulsa. I want you to pull the resources together of the church, and I want you to give $1 million away to the three survivors that are still living and to businesses and nonprofits that are building up the black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we did it. We drove people, flew people, gave a million dollars away. As I was going away from there, the Holy Spirit said, that was the seed for what I'm about to do. Okay, that's a Sunday. Pastor Jerome, three days later, I get a call from my security. And he says, are you going to this meeting? I said, Scott, you know I'm not going to the meeting. I'm on vacation. He said, oh, okay, all right, never mind. I said, but what meeting? <laughs> he said, something's happening. I said, tell me where to be. He sent me a pen. There was a building in our city, 197,000 square feet, looked like something that Tony Stark built for the Avengers to be able to have board meetings. 30 acres right on the highway built by an oil company six years ago for $64 million. The oil company went belly up. <laughs> they built it for us. 
Tracy, you got to see this thing. I walked into this building. It overlooks the entire city. We were looking to rent or lease three floors. And in the middle of the negotiation to lease it, the owner came back and said, we don't want to lease it to y'all no more. We said, what, is it because we're black? And he said, no, we need to sell it. So what do you mean? We need to sell it for half of what we paid for it six years ago. And we haven't put it on the market yet, but we felt like we were supposed to ask y'all. As I was going down the elevator, I feel the presence of God. The Holy Spirit said to me, Michael, you didn't believe for this, but I need your help to get this done on the earth. He said, I want the kingdom to own this, but I couldn't find enough people in this city with faith. So I brought you off a vacation because I knew you had the faith for this. He said, will you partner with me? I said, God, it's a done deal. I told the team as I was walking, as my assistant is sitting here as my witness, I said, this is our building. And when I walked out that place, I went back on vacation. I didn't stress about it because I didn't bring it to me. I didn't toil about it because I didn't try to make it happen. I went to Aruba. And when I came back, I came back on a Monday. They said, Pastor, all of the papers are ready. I went in on a Wednesday with my founding pastor and the team and in a boardroom full of people that probably would never be around me. I signed the contract for $35 million. Now watch this and told them before I sign this last paper, while I have everybody's attention, let me testify of God's goodness. And with oil tycoons, owners of banks, people uh, that would never set foot in my church, I preached for 35 minutes of how when God is on your side and he gives you a crazy idea that God will move heaven and earth to put his kids in position to expand the kingdom. I don't know who this is for, but this fight is not yours. All you need is faith. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Somebody's baby is starting to jump right now because you're seeing I'm just a regular dude that don't got a whole bunch. But if God gives you a vision, somebody put your hand on your belly right now. If God gives you a vision, if God shows you something, nothing can stop it. Put your hand on your belly. I pray that there will be a birthing. Yep. There will be a birthing of visions, dreams, and ideas. You're going to mark this night. There's stuff coming. What if the big thing that God needed to do in your life didn't take money? What if it didn't take connections? What if it didn't take networking? What if the only qualification that you needed for this next season of elevation was faith. Tonight, I want to give you the step that allowed all three of these things. Our church now owns over $70 million worth of real estate in our city. And that's in the last three years, Pastor Hannah. Okay. I know that just blew a lot of people's mind. You, I could have said 700 million. It would have been the same thing to you. This don't happen. This is crazy. Until it happens. And so tonight, sit down.
I'm about to unlock you. Because anytime God does something for an organization, it is the precursor to let you know he can do it for the organism. See, so many times we come in these places and we shout about what happened to the organization and then we go live in a, a mud hut and we believe in God for ramen noodles and we've given our last $27 and God said, that is dumb. Your family is not going to be saved by you being dry around the mouth, begging them for things. The Bible said that you should be the lender and not the borrower. He said that we would be the head and not the tail. He said that we would own land, that we didn't even have to till. But there has to be a reason why it hasn't happened. And I think it's because the people of God have not had enough faith. We got a lot of facts, not enough faith. And in a day and age where people believe more in Google than God, we have to get back to a place where our faith is ignited. And so I want you to write this statement down because everything that I just told you was crazy faith. Somebody shot at me, crazy faith. Come on, say it with your chest. But let me help you understand something. Crazy faith is not where you start. I know everybody wants that, but crazy faith is not where you start. It is where you find yourself after you're diligent and dedicated to exercising, watch this, baby faith. It doesn't start off with the temple. It started off in that first gym that you believed God for. It started off with the prayer meeting. It doesn't start off by going into the hospital and laying hands and healing up cancer. It starts off by when you have a headache, not just going to the cabinet and popping the pills, but laying hands on yourself. Baby, somebody say baby faith. Baby faith is reading your word every day. Well, no, Pastor Hannah gonna have a word for me on Sunday. No, 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 no. God's got a word for you today. Baby faith is actually reading the word and receiving it, not just posting it on your Facebook or Instagram because it works with your aesthetic. You posted it and didn't even receive it? Conviction. <laughs> when I think about babies, I think about my family. I have four babies and I've never shown them in Chicago. Do y'all got that picture of my babies up here? These are my babies right here. Um, my, my fine wife, she not here, but she watching right now. Girl, I got something for you when I get home. <laughs> oh, I felt the glory of God. Um, but that one in the middle, her name is Isabella. She looks just like her mother. And something happened when she was four years old that's going to give us the, the, the segue into what I have to share with you tonight. When she was four years old, we were in my car and we were driving. And she's looking out the window at the clouds and she says, Daddy, do you see it? What, baby? She said, oh my goodness, do you see it? It was like a Disney movie. I was like, uh. <laughs> I said, what is it, baby? She said, it's an elephant with a pink tutu on and she's having a tea party with the princesses. Do you see it? <laughs> Baby, I, I'm, Daddy, do you see it? Now the elephant is twirling, twirling. Do you see it, Daddy? And the Holy Spirit said, agree with her. And I said, Baby, if you see it, Daddy definitely sees it. And I said, God, what's going on? He said, I need you to be more like that, Michael. I said, more like what? More like your daughter is, able to see things that are not visible to everyone, but with the right perspective. It becomes a picture that, that can actually manifest in your life. And I said, okay, God, what you, what, you, what you want me to do? He said, Michael, 
I want to show you how your imagination is the tool that I placed on the inside of you to begin to create a world with my help that will change whatever situation you're in right now. And tonight I came to unlock somebody with, with a word that may seem very trivial to you, but it's one of the most spiritual things that you can unlock in your life, and it's the word imagination. Write this point down. The genesis of crazier faith is your imagination. And I can tell by the responses that I'm talking to a bunch of old crusty Christians. You stopped imagining a long time ago. You're so grown that God could literally show you what he wants to do in your life and you would convince God of why you're too old, why you don't have enough money, why God should choose somebody else. You just crusty. You that piece of bread in the cupboard that, let me stop. Y'all know that one, the butt of the bread, the booty bread, the one that don't nobody want. That's how your spiritual life looks. Because you stopped imagining what God could do through you. Can I prove you, to you that imagination is a key component to what God wants to do in every believer's life? Let me prove it to you. Genesis 127 at the beginning of the book for all you real saved people. So God created human beings in his own. Say it again. Out of every word that he could use to describe how he created us. What is the root word of imagination? So God at the beginning created all of us in his own image, in the image or the imagination of God, he created them, both male and female, he created them. You may have never thought about it like this, but me and you were God's imagination. Somebody needs to look at somebody and say, and he did a good job. <laughs> and he did good, didn't he? <laughs> and then God, the creator himself, continues this theme with Abraham, the father of faith. In Genesis chapter 12, you can go research it. I don't got time tonight. But he literally tells Abram, I'm about to take you on a crazy faith journey. And your whole family can't go with you. So I need to give you an image to keep you steady while I'm about to take you away from everything that's comfortable. He literally says, go to the land I will show you. Hold the heck up. I only can go if you show me. He said, if I showed you, you would be certain. And the, the difference between walking by faith and, and not walking by sight is it can't be sure. He said, go to the land I will show. Step and I'll show you. Step and I'll make a way. Step and I'll bring the business partner. Open the bank account and I'll put money in it. So many believers at the starting line waiting for the gun to sound and God said run I put it in you run I told you I would do it run well I'm waiting on them <laughs> I'm waiting on my family to agree he literally says go to the land I will show you so God is so good and his grace is so sufficient that he's like, this boy ain't going, he ain't going to stay the course if I just let him go. So I need to give him an image. I need to tap into his imagination. Abraham, come here. Come out the side of the city. Look up into the sky. And look at all the stars. Number them if you can. He was tapping into his imagination. This is the number of descendants you will have. These are the nations that will be blessed by you. 
Because I know sometimes when you're trying to convince your wife and your kids to keep in this journey, and I know when you're doing it and year one goes by and year two goes by and year three goes by and year four goes by and it's not looking like it's going to happen in year six and year seven, that you need an image to keep you from going back. And I don't know who's in this room today that forgot about the image God showed you. Your imagination is the thing that God wants to unlock so you stop limiting him. Okay, write this down because some of y'all still just looking like, I don't know. Okay, cool. God's imagination created us. We are created in his image. Therefore, we can also create with imagination. The cell phone that you hold in your hand 30 years ago was in somebody's imagination. The chair you sit in right now was in somebody's, help me, imagine. That wig you have on your head right now. Lot. I mean, it's laid to the, it look good, girl. That lace front was in somebody's, the temple. It didn't come from nowhere. You are sitting in the imagination of Pastor John Hannah. My question to you is, will we ever get to experience the realization of your imagination? Stay with me. So tonight, all I came on assignment from Tulsa, Oklahoma to do was unlock an anointed imagination in every believer that would have crazy faith to see beyond what you see right now. Unlocking an anointed imagination. Pastor Mike, explain that to me. Unlocking, to open or set free. Some of y'all have been bound in your mental. Anointed. A lot of people try to make this a very deep and spiritual word, but if you research it in the scripture, anointed means two things. It means God's approval, which means that when God is doing something and he anoints it, that means I co-sign that. And the real thing that a lot of people need to understand is you don't want to do nothing without God's approval. Because when you have God's approval on something, it makes it easy which is the second part of the definition it's divine enablement so when God anoints something he approves it and gives you power to actually do it a lot of people have imagination but they do not have an anointed imagination so when you try to do it you keep failing a lot of y'all in relationships that are in your imagination and the reason why it keeps failing because God's approval is not on it and you keep doing the same thing getting the same results Mike you preach too hard right now but they really gotta get it you gotta understand that what God wants to do is approve the things that you do you don't want to live in a neighborhood without his anointing you don't want to start that business without his anointing no I thought I was gonna do this little nail thing with my homegirl Sequisa so we just gonna get out here black women entrepreneur is his anointing on it don't you bandwagon something that he hasn't put his hand on and so what God wants to do is give you an anointed imagination let me tell you what imagination is it's the ability of the mind to create new ideas or pictures not present to the senses. You can't touch it, smell it, see it. That sounds like a Missy Elliott song. Touch it, see it, smell it. Y'all not saved. I did that just on purpose. I knew Chicago was fit. Mm. My type of people. So an anointed imagination, if you can write this down, write it down. It's the ability to create new ideas or pictures not present to the senses that God approves and empowers us to live out for his glory. What Pastor Hannah had was something that was anointed, approved by God, even in seed form, 
that now we are all living out for his glory. What happened back in Tulsa, where God took the wealth of the wicked and he just gave it to this young boy with faith? He did all of that because I got an image of what God could do. And what I found is, the key to this, is most of us have been shutting down our imagination to be able to see ourselves in the way that God sees us and what he can do through us. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus has to check his disciples because they got the wrong perspective. Look at it. It says, about that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Jesus, great message, brother. That was, <laughs> that was really good what you did, JC. I uh, got a question for you. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Would it be somebody dark, handsome, purple shoes on? They were trying to get a compliment or put in position in this moment. And Jesus says, let me teach these fools something. Where's a child? Come here, Susie. And he calls little Susie over and puts her in the middle of the circle. And this is what he says. Look at it. I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sins, repent, and become like little children. Uh -oh. You will never get into the kingdom of heaven. This is scripture we skip over. We talk about the sin part, but we don't talk about the second part. Unless you repent of your sins and become more like children? I'm too grown for that. You know what I've been through? I put that on my mama. Ain't nobody about to come up here and just sweat me. I paid for this. I did this. If God won't, and we do all of this stuff. Some of y'all are professional adults. No, no, no. I'm coming for you right now because it, it makes you feel like you're special, but you're locking yourself out of the kingdom of God. I know we don't talk about this scripture a lot because so many of us want to be seen a certain way. But God is saying, it only matters how I see you. And unless you repent and become more like children... You'll never inherit the kingdom of God. What? Let me give you a key to the kingdom. Be more kitty. Be more kitty. I love that when I walked out here, Pastor Hannah and Pastor Glenn, they was on a live feed, and all I seen was Pastor Hannah do this. And Pastor Glenn was like, ooh, 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 my turn. And he... This at the ribbon cutting ceremony. These the adults that are in charge. I walk in to meet Pastor Hannah today, first time ever in person. I come in the room, I put out my hand, he said. He's the pastor. But there's something. See, when you get all of this, you got to be dignified and you got to put have everything put together and you got to know everything. But there's something that God trusts in the character of a child. There's something in there. I'm trying to unlock somebody and this is going to help you. You want a key to the kin kingdom? Become more kitty. I didn't say immature. I said you have characteristics like a child. I have four kids, so I, I, I listed the top four characteristics of all ch children, okay? Children, trust. Kids, trust. You can tell a four-year-old, today is Yandan day. And they'll be like, cool, 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 cool. What's today? I know, I know it's Yandan Day. <laughs> Why? Because when you were talking to them kids, trust. What else do kids do? Kids believe. Until you bust a bubble, because you old and mad. Some of y'all just evil. 
Because you ain't got no joy in your life. You see your kids having a little joy. Santa Claus ain't real. That's me. I bought in prison. I bought that. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. I couldn't get my new wig because you got them Jordans. Let me stop. Miserable. Y'all preparing your speeches for Christmas already. Some of y'all already. But the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, the Two Fairy, all of them real. Why? Because kids believe. What else do kids do? Kids obey. Not your kids, but a lot of other people's kids <laughs> obey. And you know the last thing everybody's kids do before they're robbed of it? It's kids imagine. Can you throw me that water bottle right there, please? Kids imagine. See, this water bottle right here, when I was a kid, wasn't a water bottle. Put a picture of me up as a kid, never before seen, picture of Pastor Michael Todd as a child. No, no pants on, wearing somebody else's shirt. I didn't care. This came up on my memories while I was preparing for this message. And the Holy Spirit said, Michael, that kid knew more about the kingdom than the pastor I'm talking to right now. I said, what? I read the Bible. That kid couldn't read. I worship. He didn't know what worship was. He said, but he knew more about the kingdom. Because when he saw something like this, this could become anything. And God said to me, what if you could take your current situation and say, depression, anxiety, every lie of the enemy. There is a place in God that your situation ain't what your situation looks like. If you would tap in to an anointed imagination. Sit down, I got 15 more minutes and I'm about to work every second. My question to you is where did your imagination die? This week I need you to locate where it died. Cause there's about to be a resurrection. I know being a musician is hard, especially when 2020 came and God said, you were going to do this and do this and do this and do this. And now you playing for churches you will never play for. You're doing stuff you would never do. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to relate to somebody who, who, who understands what it looks like when God shows you one thing, but it don't look like it's going to happen. I mean, I wonder what it must have felt like year two after breaking ground on land that you didn't even own and standing up bold and saying, God's going to build this and probably had drawings and renderings and people called you crazy. But why did you keep going? There was an image that God showed him that he still had enough childlike faith to believe. And my question to you is, where did your imagination die? Forget this building, it's done. 
Now what? No, 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 no. Not for this church. For you. Do you go back after this and live the same? Go to the business that you hate working at? And think this is your portion for the rest of your life? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to talk to something on the inside of you. God told you to sign up for the college and you still ain't filled out the application? And oh, I'm too old for that. God said Sarah had a baby at 90 and you still telling me what I can't do through you and for you and to you? It's time to unlock your imagination. And I know, because it almost happened to me. What kills imagination is trauma. And some of y'all are so wounded. Your imagination died in the youth group. It died in that household. It's killed by trials, turmoil, tragedy. But this is the thing God told me, you got to get it back. You got to get your imagination back tonight. Because if you can't, everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes all over this room. Watching online, close your eyes. Imagine yourself next year. See, it's so crazy. Some people started shouting and some people were waiting on another instruction. You were waiting for me to tell you what was happening next year. Imagine it. Where you at? How much money is in the bank? What waist size are you? Uh-oh. Come on, close your eyes. Some of y'all still looking at me. You, you won't even do this little exercise. Imagine yourself free. Imagine yourself not having to go to those websites. Imagine yourself not popping those pills. Imagine yourself not going to that alcohol under the cabinet that nobody knows about. Imagine. Imagine yourself 12 months from now. Who's around you? Do you have joy? Is your company thriving? Imagine. Uh, see, the, the problem is that this is so hard for people because you have so much clouding the vision that God is trying to give you right now. But I'm asking everybody for the next week to set aside time to imagine. Why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? Because imagination is the engine of your faith. It's the engine. Can I break this down for you? Take that music down because they think I'm about to end. So calm down. Please, if you don't have to leave, because some of y'all are just going to go home and watch Netflix, and that's going to not do anything for your future. But this next little bit is about to change your life. Faith is the vehicle to your future. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to need faith to do it. My question is, if faith is the vehicle to your future, what kind of car does your faith look like? She said, oh, a Bentley. No, more like a Buick. Uh-uh. Rolls Royce? No. Rust Bucket? But this week, I want you to evaluate seriously, what does the vehicle of your faith look like? And then by crazy faith, I want you to get another picture of what you want it to look like. Because faith is the vehicle to your future. But hope is the fuel for your faith. You can have the best vehicle in the world, but if you don't have no fuel, you ain't going nowhere. That's why Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's why I come down to the point that imagination is the engine. You can have the vehicle of faith, you can have the fuel of faith, but if you do not have an engine, you're stuck. 
Pastor Mike, what are you saying to us tonight? I want you to place the engine of imagination back into your life. And I want you to start to dream again the visions that God has given you. I know you don't have the money, but close your eyes and see it. Imagination is free. It don't take you no money to imagine yourself healed. No, it hasn't happened yet. But imagine yourself going to your 70th birthday party and being able to, wow, wow, wow. See, I know what's happening, Pastor Hannah. A lot of people's engine is not run by imagination. Their engine is run by intellect. So God wants you to go somewhere in the vehicle of faith, but you have an engine of intellect. Everything got to make sense. Well, as I look at all of the data, I just don't feel like this is quantifiably a wise decision as a fiduciary. And you go through all of these words. But the thing you need to know about faith is faith begins where understanding ends. Where you don't understand, that's where faith shows up. And some of y'all aren't running on the engine of intellect, you're running on the engine of ignorance. This is why Pastor Hannah and Pastor Glenn get up here every Sunday and tell you to read the word, to actually pray, because you do not know the promises that God has already laid up for you. You're ignorant of the promises. It reminds me of a time I went on an all-inclusive trip and was still paying for meals. You laughing at me, but this is how you look every day. As a believer, there are things that are built in to the life of a kingdom kid. And you over here begging people for resources and my God owns... Uh, his name is Jehovah Jireh, the God that will provide. He is the God that is with me. Oh, but... You ignorant of the promises. And some of y'all, your engine is intellect. Others of you, the engine is ignorance. And some of y'all, the engine is influence. What are they doing? We not doing that no more? Okay. We don't sing those praise songs? All right. We don't go to the... And you just follow everybody and anybody and God said I called you to stand out I'm, I'm looking the reason Pastor Hannah God had to raise this church up in the hood you're not the first one he tried to do it with he had been trying to do this for decades but when I looked at all of the numbers and all this this doesn't fiscally make sense and people followed the influence of others when God was trying to raise it up and he had to find somebody with imagination. Y'all, somebody like, this is so elementary and you still got nothing. Oh, you wanna shout then, then to go back to nothing? You wanna get laid out? to not be able to lend nobody nothing? Bring the Jalen back. It's your winning season and you keep losing? I'm trying to give you the practical key. See it before you see it. In that video montage, I saw you standing when there was just concrete and beams. Guess what Pastor Hannah was doing? He was using his. Oh, I 
feel the presence of God now. Because somebody's about to get unlocked. Yep, I feel it. It's about to happen now. Can I tell it to you like this? Your imagination, watch this, is your spiritual womb. Whatever starts in your imagination comes out in your life. Not just good things. Whatever you put in the womb, whatever seed you put in a womb, give it time, it's coming out crying. Can I be honest? Before I got married, I, I, I cheated on my girlfriend uh, that would become my wife. Oh, I know pastors don't say stuff like that because y'all lie and y'all are bougie. But I was a... Uh. At my church, I would have said it, but I don't know how y'all do here. Okay? And see, I'm hot. I'm humble, open, and transparent. I don't care where I go. I'm going to be exactly who God created me to be because he's still working on me. You understand what I'm saying? And that's a good thing for some of y'all because you don't have to be perfect to be able to be used by God. Let me stop. But, but I, I cheated on um, my girlfriend that would become my wife. And... Um, the one thing that I know is every time that I did it, it didn't just happen. It always started in my imagination. I'd be watching a music video. Wow, how did... How did she do that? And there was a seed planted in my imagination. And sometimes it would come out two days later, 10 days later, two years later. But it was coming out because it was planted there. What if the body of Christ would protect their imagination? The reason you can't watch everything it's because this is too powerful. The reason you can't go everywhere, it's not because we're trying to be religious. You got too much power. The reason you can't hang with everybody, it's because you got too much power. The reason why you can't go to that city, the reason why God shut that job down, the reason why he didn't allow you to marry them, It would have took control of your imagination. Oh, I'm preaching. Oh. Because you know that's what anxiety is. It's the baby of imagination and fear. The reason why you're so anxious to go everywhere, because you planted fear in your imagination and you're thinking of all these things that coulda, shoulda, woulda, kinda, woulda, what, what if, and all this other stuff that happened. And now it's coming out of your body because you let fear and imagination have a baby. Now you got all of us up here, come on! Oh, man, I'm tired. I'm tired. And I'm, I'm actually hungry. If you could get control of your imagination, the altar would be for rejoicing. If you could get a... Oh, God. If you would stop scrolling so much on your high school friend's page and letting them get inside your imagination, but crack open the word of God and get the promises from him. That's why 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, cast down every vain imagination. Everybody by faith do this. Cast it down. That's not God's responsibility.
God is not going to cast down your vain imagination. This is your job. Come to the altar, get prayer, but you still going to have to tear it down. Ask for strength, but he ain't taking the Lord, just take it away. God will do everything you can, but nothing you can. I'm stepping on somebody's toes because you've been believing God, take it away. God said, turn it off. I'm not taking away what you won't turn off. You've been around broke people all your life and God been telling you to get new friends, but it's chooky and pooky and new, new. And then my boys and God said, get away from them because they are taking control of your, um, we always gonna be in this hood. We gonna rob for our hood. We, no, I'm leaving. I'll write y'all like I, Everybody do it again, come on. Everything that has been taking up space in your imagination, I want us on the count of three, I want us to pull it down. Some of us are pulling down generational habits, generational thought process, poverty mentality. Yeah, some of y'all standing up now because you know how serious this is. Every vain imagination, this is a prophetic sign for you. If you're at home, I want you to lift your hands and some of y'all can't do it just once because there's several things that need to be teared down. One, we're tearing down every vain imagination. Two, God's not gonna do it, you gonna do it. Three, come on, tear it down. Come on, tear it down. Come on, oh, I feel the power of God. Somebody tear it down. Poverty, lack, doubt, debt, depression, terror. Somebody's breakthrough is coming right now. I tear down every vain imagination. Low self-esteem, insecurity, terror. Tear it down. Tear it down. All week long, you gonna be riding in your car and you... You gonna wake up in the morning. I'm tearing it down. Every vain imagination. Everything that would exalt itself the, against the knowledge of God. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Something moving. Somebody's about to reclaim their imagination. God's about to give you an anointed imagination. You thought you saw the business before? You ain't seen nothing yet. You thought your family was healed and whole? There's another level of love coming to your household. You, oh, you thought that you were powerful before? There's a new revelation. Cause I'm freeing up space and I'm tearing down every vain imagination. Michael, I just keep having these thoughts. They just come. I heard it said like this. You can't stop a bird from landing on your head, but you can stop it from making a nest there. Some of y'all have been letting thoughts. Well, I never could be used by God. If they found out my past, you talking to somebody who was addicted to pornography, a liar and a manipulator. I had a car insurance fraud case that almost went felony. As Bishop is my witness, he the one told me I had a warrant out for my arrest. I ain't making this stuff up. Do you know how the enemy tried to plague my imagination? And God said, don't let it stay there. Don't let that sum you up. When they told you you could never build it here, you didn't allow that vain imagination to exalt itself against what God already had told you. And some of y'all, he told you your family would be back together. Ah, he told you your family would be saved in the balcony. He told you you would be able to start that business that changes the future of generations. 
And something came that was vain imagination. And God said, tear it down. Somebody say, tear it down. Okay, pastor, I'm going to believe. I'm going to get my imagination together. So I'm going to just start believing for anything. All right, hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because they think they think they think they could just go now and just start thinking about everything. That's gonna be my wife. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's somebody else's wife. I'm taking over for Pastor Hannah. He don't know it yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Because if we honest, our imagination can run wild. So let me tell you how to, how to purify your imagination. This is the last key. Imagination is purified in intercession. So think the wildest thought and then bring it to God in prayer. And prayer purifies your imagination. God, that's my husband. I promise it is. Bring it to him. I'm about to take over this. All I'm saying is, if you want your imagination to be anointed and have God's approval on it, you got to talk to him about it. So your imagination is purified in intercession. That's why I love this house. Because the one thing I knew about this house before I ever met Pastor Hannah was this was a praying church. I never met somebody that would be up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 3 a.m., 2 a.m., have all y'all on a block of Chicago yelling to the north, south, east, and the west at 1159. This man, this is a praying church. Why? Because the imagination is big. So we have to bring more to intercession so that we can make sure what God gives us is purified. That's what Proverbs 3, 5 says, in all your ways, in everything you imagine, from the car you drive to the house you live in to the suit you wear, anything that's in this imagination and all of them, acknowledge him and he will make your way straight or direct your path. Intercession purifies your imagination. But guess what else? Intercession changes your focus. I can't tell you how many times I went to prayer with my imagination and I thought it was about one thing. God, I'm going to have a bunch of money. And the reason I wanted the bunch of money to stun on people. Gucci, Louis, Fendi, Prada. They go, no. But when you go to prayer, can you come right here, camera? Go out of focus for me real quick. Yeah, yeah, just take it all the way out of focus. Yeah, just, oh, that's a real good camera, huh? Somebody get me a camera that can go out of focus. Y'all got these next level, these, these blessed, there you go. Get me out of focus. She's like, oh, no, I can't get out of focus. We got these sanctified cameras. It just corrects it. it just, but that's what happens in prayer. When it goes out of focus, but you say, God, I'm bringing this to you, it auto-corrects everything. Everything, every lie, every wrong friendship, everything. I can't get off a path if I stay in intercession. He keeps winning. How? Because I'm bringing all my imagination into intercession and he keeps changing God it's out of focus right now but Lord I'm trusting you and God I think this is what you said but as I make this step God I thank you that you're making it clearer right now God 
And Father God, I don't know if this is the school my child should go to, but even as I go to fill out the paperwork, Father, you're making it clearer. Father, you're the God that sends confirmation. You're the God that brings dark things into the light. The stuff that I don't even know right now. God, you're fighting battles I can't see right now as I bring my imagination into intercession. Everything comes into, everybody shout at me, focus. The last thing intercession does, I'm talking about your imagination. Because some of y'all about to start dreaming. I mean, tonight is going to be hard to sleep. Because now that you took the cap off, somebody say no cap. <laughs> That's the first time Mama Georgia ever said that. But somebody say no cap. Now that you've taken the limit off your imagination, oh, I feel the presence of God. Now God has the ability to drop stuff on you that he has the resources for, but just needed the vessel for. Is there any vessels in the room tonight? Intercession doesn't just change the focus. Intercession changes your feelings. So many of us, when we get our imagination, we get caught up on what we think it's going to be. And when you take that thing to intercession, God says, yeah, 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 let me change your feelings. I'm going to make it, I'm going to change your focus, but what I was really trying to do is change your feelings about it. Some of y'all, y'all go to prayer with DeMarcus because you think he's your husband. Because you know DeMarcus got the thing and the thing and the thing. But I promise you, go to prayer. I know you done already cut yourself out and put it in a picture and got it ready for Instagram. Y'all crazy. But go to intercession with that thing. And you went with DeMarcus and you'll come out with Daniel. You say, God, Daniel? But he'll change your feelings about it. I don't know, he is kind of cute, his little glasses and suspenders and everything. Look at him with his little pocket protector, he cute. I'm telling you, you don't want, you don't want God to give you what you want. You want God to give you what you need. And you can see today, but he can see tomorrow. You can see to the corner, but he can see around the corner. We serve a God that knows what we need. And in inter intercession, we bring our imagination and he'll change our feelings. It even happened to our Lord and Savior. Do y'all remember when he was in intercession before he went to the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane? Y'all don't remember? And he was, he was crying and bleeding, drops of blood. And he said, I know I signed up for this before I came. But my bad. I tap out. I don't, don't want to do this no more. If there's any other way, any other way. But he was in intercession. And as soon as he said, I don't want to do, nevertheless, change his feelings. Not my will, but yours be done. Some of y'all have been frustrated about a decision that you won't take to intercession. And God has said, if you bring it to me, I'll change your feelings about it. Intercession changes your focus. Intercession changes your feelings. Last thing, intercession changes your future. Don't be musicians who don't pray. I'm not saying that I was always the dude when the pastor always said, because I was on the drums, and they'd be like, musicians, stand up. Let me pray over you. Let me get And we'd be like, man, they just trying to show out. I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I was you. Like, I was you. Not as good as you, but I was you. 
what differentiated me later on in my life is I developed a prayer life. And God showed me that the drums were a vehicle, not a destination. He showed me the keys were a vehicle, not a destination. He showed me the sound booth was a vehicle. He showed me the studio was a vehicle. He changed my feelings. He changed my focus. And he changed my future. That's why when you imagine yourself, See, when I used to imagine myself, if I was in an auditorium like this, I'd be killing on the drums. That's how I imagined it. But, but now I'm in an auditorium like this, and I'm still here. My imagination was in the right vicinity. I was in the right room. I just needed my focus and my feeling and my future to be changed. And the thing that did that was intercession. There is another wailing that is about to come from the church who is going to see the kingdom of heaven actually be possessed on earth. I know I'm talking too high now, but I'm talking about the whole thing as it is in heaven. Let it come down in, on earth. That's what's about to happen. There is a wealth transfer. There is an authority transfer. There is a power transfer, but it only can come to people who have an imagination that is anointed by God to see things that the current situation cannot quantify. But it's only crazy until it happens that's why James 5 16 says the effective fervent prayers of righteous people not perfect people that's what the church wanted to say just righteous people who are in right standing I messed up now I'm back I jacked up now I'm back they avail much or they work we gotta go Yeah, we got to go. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. But I just came here to be a living example along with the one you stand in in this building. So there's two confirmations tonight. The seat you sat in and the ground you stand on was a confirmation. And this 6'1 black sweaty young man is the I, I poured out what really happened. Not a story I'm telling you about and we're shouting about one day. I've lived a life of crazy faith. But it came because I let God unlock an anointed imagination. Can I give y'all one last example? On June 25th is the first time I saw the building that I told you about, the Transformation Towers, the new global headquarters of Transformation Church. And as I walked out of the building, everybody said bye. I was driving off and the Holy Spirit said, you're not going to get an image of what I'm about to do? I almost walked out of the moment that God was telling me he was gonna do something without getting an image that I could replay. Because when you're going through something and you're taking a journey of crazy faith, you have to rehearse the promise. Not replay the pain, not regurgitate the problems. You have to rehearse the promise. So I pulled out and I turned right and hit a U-turn and came back and I pulled out my phone 30 minutes before after I seen this building and this was the video that I recorded look at this or maybe not
Somebody tell me, do they got it? No? Okay. Go to my Instagram. Basically, I recorded a video, Bishop as my witness, said I'm standing outside of this building, and this building is going to be the future home of Transformation Church. And I said, I don't know how this is going to happen, but in crazy faith, I'm standing out here. And people was driving by, and I was trying to act normal. And I said, God, do what you did with every other thing. I want a picture. I want to, I want to get, I want to get a picture. And I'm standing in front of this massive building. And I got an image. And once I got that image, I played it every single day. Now watch. Less than 60 days later. Where they said we had no finance in pastor. They put the keys in my hand. But can I tell you the crazy part about it? Can I tell them, Bishop? So the oil company that was in there, they actually didn't want to leave the building. So we became the new owners. But they decided that they wanted to stay and lease space from us. So they moved from the entire building and went down to the second and third floor and they pay enough in the mortgage to pay for They pay the note. God transferred the ownership to somebody with faith and made somebody else pay for it. I'm telling you today that we serve a God who will do the impossible. We gained everything and lost nothing. Standing all over the building. Standing all over the building. Bro, we don't pay for we don't pay for it. They hold on. That means that God didn't need my resource. This ain't for everybody. Some of y'all going back to the same situations. And that's cool. Thank you for coming tonight. But he didn't need my resource, brother. He needed my faith. God can't do anything on the earth without a partner. But some things he only can do with partners who have crazy faith. The reason I came here tonight was to ignite every person to have an anointed imagination eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart or the imagination the things that God has prepared for you sister the things that he has prepared for you brother who, who's receiving this right now? Hands lifted all over. The things he's preparing for you, you haven't even thought or imagined. But will you have the faith? Tonight as we close, I didn't come here to give you information. Pastor Hannah, Pastor Glenn, and the pastors, Pastor Walker, these are some of the smartest people in the world. I, I, I told y'all already, I got six months of TCC, top quality education, Tulsa Community College. Woo! You didn't come here for information. You, you didn't even come here tonight for revelation. Every scripture I told you, you've heard it before. New package, but it's the same thing. Tonight, I'm on divine assignment to give you an impartation.
I have the gift of faith. I don't have the ability to believe sometimes. It, ooh, I walk into places, and if God says it's mine, it's in. Either this thing is real or it's not. Either, either this thing is real or it's not. And tonight, God said, Michael, I want you to unlock the anointed imagination in anybody that would have the faith to believe. I don't know if it's legal or not to ask you to come to the altar, but I'm going to tell you what God showed me in my imagination before I left Tulsa today. He showed me people taking steps of faith, not because something magical was going to happen at the altar. This was a prophetic sign of you starting to move out of wrong thinking and wrong vain imagination. And he said, anybody that has the faith to believe that you need to get as close to this altar as you can, because there's about to be an impartation of faith over your life, over your family. Oh, there's too many people. Oh, there's stuff. No, 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 no. Don't let anything stop you at this current moment moment and when you come down here come down here with your hands raised so oh, I feel the presence of God I know there's gonna it don't matter if you got to come down from the balcony it's worth it to take the walk it's worth it to take the walk because the just shall live by faith we walk by faith and not by sight there's something happening it's not in my touch it's not in my words it's in your faith there is a faith that is about to well up on the inside of you so that's gonna create things that eyes have not seen brother families sister young man this is a new day for you yep now close your eyes all over this building yep what's happening now as we have created space for the next two minutes for God to give you the vision and plant the seed in your imagination. Is your Kaylin still in here? Come on, sis. I need your help. This ain't about me at this moment. It's not about who came with you. Ooh, he's showing y'all some stuff. Don't cap it. Your marriage is going to be whole. This will no longer be a business partnership. There's going to be passion there. Come on, see it. See you employing people, not working for somebody. See it. Come on. No, 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 no. Right now, he's giving you an imagination. Enlarge us. Enlarge us. No limits. No boundaries. I see increase all around me. I said, break forth. Stretch forth. I said, release me. Enlarge my territory. No limits. Hey! Say no bound. I see it's happening in your imagination. All around. Transform. Hey! Break forth. Said release. Enlarge my terror. Now just let him minister to you right there. Come on. Let him minister to you. Close your eyes. Don't look up here. If you're online, don't look up here. God's trying to show you something right now. Woo! Woo! Something's happening in this moment. Oh, God. Birthing us something brand new. Put a seed in our imagination that we can't shake. Do something in us, Father, that will be eternal. Woo! I see it before I see it. 
is happening. I see it before I see. Come on, receive it. This it's is a prophetic song. Me. I see it before I see. It's being released. I see it before I see. Somebody needs to get the vision oh, before you walk into happening. it. Somebody. I see it before I see. Oh, it's for me. I see it before I see. Yeah, it's being released. I see it before I see. I see it before I see. It's yeah. happening. See it before I see He's giving you something yeah, new. I see it Receive I see. it. Oh, Receive it. It's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening, happening it's now. Happening now. Oh, it's happening now. Yes, it's happening now. Receive it. Oh, it's forming now. Yes, it's forming now. Oh, it's being released. Come on, it's being released. It's falling. It's being released. The laser imagination oh. is I saw this in my imagination and tonight I stand in this house of God called the temple <laughs> to declare over your people an infusion and an impartation of faith that allows them to believe Beyond the limit, oh, so to to believe beyond their hurts, to believe beyond the obstacles. I hear God saying, Try again that thing that you did and it didn't work before. God said, Try again, try again with faith, try again knowing that God is on your side, try again. Somebody shout at me, Try again. I declare that the portion of faith that you've given me 
to walk into impossible situations and see mountains fold. I pray over every marriage, every child, every single person, every business owner, every pastor, you better receive this right now, every entrepreneur, every person who's been struggling with purpose, I pray that you would give them the audacity to believe like never before. Father, let there be a fire that raises from the belly of faith that allows people to walk in a new level of obedience. And I declare that intercession will become our new boardroom. That any decision that we need to make, we will bring to your feet. Oh, if y'all could see what I see right now. There are things dropping from heaven right now. Oh, y'all don't got enough imagination, but I see it. There's things. Your family next Christmas is going to be together and it's not going to be fake. There's going to be a turnaround. That son, that daughter you've been believing for is about to get saved. That thing that has been your opposition is about to be settled in your favor. God says, see it, see it, see it, see it. See it before you see it. See it before you see it. Somebody say, I receive it. No, say it like you mean it. I receive it. Say it one more time like it just happened. Say, I receive it. Mark tonight, somehow, write it down, take a picture, do something. Because this is the night your imagination Yeah Sleep with your phone next to you Keep your journal ready Because tonight something unlocked And whenever the vain imagination comes, you say no limits. Say no boundaries. No boundaries. I see increase. I see increase. All around me. All around. Say no limits. No limits. And no boundaries. No boundaries. I see increase. I see increase. All around me. All This is the last thing I got to do. I'm scared to come back to Chicago. Because what will have happened six months from now? Y'all don't even believe. Because what will have happened six months from now? Matter of fact, we don't even need that long when faith gets unlocked. What will have happened a month from now? Some of y'all, by this time tomorrow, You got it. Okay. I have no authority other than the Holy Spirit told me to say this to y'all. Okay. So I'm not standing as I, I ain't been in ministry but two days. So, so I'm not, this ain't Pastor Mike trying to say something to y'all. The message that I spoke tonight about unlo unlocking an anointed imagination was for y'all. They, they're, they're, no, 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 listen, I, I need to be very clear. Y'all are getting it by the way. The enemy tried to steal your imagination the past seven years. And he tried to make you think that this was the pinnacle. And something happened when you finished this 
that was almost like you took off your work bag. Like it was almost like you're like, oh, like, whew. And God said, this just qualified you for what I really wanted to do. But the thing I need to tell you, especially you, mom, it's gonna get easier. It won't cost as much. Emotionally, it won't take the toll on the marriage that it took on it. It won't cost you your joy. It won't, this, this one was to break forth. This one, this one you, this one you had to break a whole bunch of stuff. But in all of those buildings that God gave us in the past three years, the first one was 10 million, the second one was 20.5, the last one was 35, and, I, and it happened on vacation. It's because God says, I can trust you. Seven years of stewarding over your word. Seven years of stewarding over the money. Seven years of doing what you said you were going to do. Seven years of standing in the face of politicians and city councilmen and, and, and people who told you they were going to be with you but then dipped with the check they said they were going to give you. Seven years! And you stay consistent. The word God gave you was the word he gave me. He said he'd been consistent. And now God said, watch me. Watch me consistently blow your mind. Oh, y'all better rejoice. Watch me consistently do it. It's going to be like everywhere you go, the doors are going to open. Everywhere you go, God is going to bless. Y'all better rejoice like you get the fruit of this. Watch me consistently do it. Watch me consistently open doors. Unlock your imagination. I think there's a city that is about to rise up in faith. If he's going to do it for this house, that means he's going to do it for this house. Somebody open up your mouth and give God a shout of praise. So this is how I'm going to do this. Holy Spirit told me, I have never done this in the history of my little bitty ministry. But the Holy Spirit told me that today I was coming to sow a seed. This entire message was for this moment. I'm not sowing for this building. God already got this one paid for. This one, he gonna pay for this one. But you need somebody to get in the trenches with you and imagine for something else. And the city development, the housing development, the stuff that he showed you for the city, for the community, for gangs to stop ravaging the streets and doing the things. Transformation Church is sowing $100,000 tonight. We ain't come here to play no games. We are about to see the faith of God's people. To rise up. This is the time for the kingdom of God to be ex. I dare somebody to shout right now, like whatever he's imagining has a... It's already done! You're not gonna have music tomorrow, shout like he just did it. Some of y'all don't need the band to give God the praise that he does. Just... 
shout now. Give him glory now. Praise him now. Last example. Last example. If you can imagine it, God can fund it. Before I met him, God already told me what I was supposed to do to resource him. God is speaking to somebody right now about what you, somebody's gonna receive it, about what you need to do what God's called you to do. He, somebody got it, oh, as long as one person got it. God's talking, he's waking somebody up on the West Coast or the East Coast or in London or Africa. He don't care where they at, but he's waking somebody up. And guess where he's talking to them? In their, imagine, there's this young black couple. There's this young white woman. There's this middle age. He's showing them you. He showed me y'all. Well, he sh he's showing somebody. Somebody got it. And today, Today, your imagination will never be capped again. You go, I don't care how old you are. God said your ladder will be greater than your four. If you're 68, you better get ready for the greatest days of your life. I love y'all. Chicago, is it okay if I come back sometime? Okay. For this wonderful man and woman, the money will be wired tomorrow. So don't even, I don't carry, I don't carry that much cash. So I, that's, I'm in Chicago, y'all crazy, <laughs> okay. I ain't even, I didn't wear my good chain cause y'all, you can have it, you can have it. But anytime you run into something impossible, something that looks like it's unlikely, something that may seem crazy. I want you to know it's only crazy until it happens. God bless you. I love you, Chicago. Thank you for allowing me to impart into this momentous occasion. Everyone just stand still for one minute. Can you just freeze for one minute? Just stand still for one minute. Sometimes we receive and then we run when we don't let it settle. If you don't mind, can you just close your eyes for just maybe 10 seconds? And I need you to begin to tell yourself, my life will never be the same. Come on, my life will never be the same. So things have been released on us tonight. Some things have been released over your life. And hear me clearly. I keep pushing this. Your last three months are going to be better than your first month. Those of you that are expecting a miracle, a sign, or a wonder, put a praise right there. On your way out of the building, um, Pastor Mike Todd has his books in the lobby. 
Some of y'all need to get the book. Ja'Kayla Carr's CD, her latest CD is in the lobby. So into kingdom. Tomorrow, everybody say tomorrow. If you all do what I tell you to do, this will be your week of faith. For anyone that is ever at a low point, Apostle Ivy Hill got me at my lowest point. And that man spoke one word over me that made me believe God that he did not leave me. Some of you, you are at a low point. You need to take these three days and just get poured back into. God has a date with you for these three days. Let's pray and I'm going to dismiss you. So God, we thank you that faith has been unlocked. And we thank you for the words that we received on tonight that have changed our lives permanently. Permanently. We'll never see life the same again. And we thank you that as we leave this building, we're imagining things that we never imagined. Well, some of us are going back to imagining again. Can we thank you for the revival of imagination? And we thank you for the revival of imagination. Now protect us as we leave this building. Don't let nobody get mad in the parking lot. We bind every spirit of cursing or accidents. And we'll all make it home safely. And we decree and declare that the next two days are going to be even better than this day. Everybody that believe that God's going to do something supernatural for you, release a praise right there. To all of the pastors that are here, if you follow, um, look for my pastors. They'll take you where there's a reception. Everyone consider yourselves dismissed. Can you please pick up any paper? We're still trying to keep the new house clean. Anywhere on you. And consider yourselves dismissed. I love you all. This was too much. Anybody overwhelmed like me? This was too much. For those online, we want to encourage you. You still have time to get here. There's more room. There's seats in the balcony. If you feel like you need more social distance, go to the balcony. You can go to the balcony. We just ask that you mask up. All right? God bless you all, and we'll be back tomorrow with Apostle Ivy Hilliard and the Donald Lawrence Singers. Love you, man. Love you, Joseph. Good seeing you.